All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about Garo, the limiter, and a lot more, because there's like a lot of things that go into explaining what's exactly going on with Garo and the limiter and why he's like starting to break it, you know, which is indicated at the end of chapter 127. And this is pretty important because first of all, it's the limiter. This is like the apex of power within the series and you know, the reason why Saitama is as powerful as he is. And this is also, I guess, like the second time it's ever mentioned in the series at all. And it's not just like a character talking about it this time. It's straight up narration. It's like one himself pretty much saying that, yeah, Garo's limiter is starting to break. So it's not like an estimation by someone. This is actually happening. So let's explain, first of all, what the limiter is, and then we can start to go into why Garo is actually starting to break it. So Dr. Genus says that every living being has an intrinsic limit to its growth because too much power becomes unbearable and overwhelms the person and could turn them into like a mindless rampaging monster, or as Psycho says, he could just straight up kill you, which we'll get into everything that she said uh, relating to this topic as well. But the mechanism for that stuff is just called a limiter. So like the power system within the world of One Punch Man has like a level cap to it basically. And when I'm talking about the limiter, I usually compare it to like playing an MMO because an MMO, you can get to the level cap, which let's just say in that game is like 100. And when you get there, you're pretty much one of the strongest players in the game. And you'll see that everyone else who has reached that cap you know, if they've maxed out all of their stats or got all the best gear or whatever, they're all the strongest players as well. But no one can go above level cap 100. Well, let's just say that if you just grinded hard enough in that MMO, like way beyond anyone else, you can start to break the level cap in the game and then begin to go into level 101. And then you can keep going into like level 120, level 1000, level 1 million, so on and so forth. That's basically what's happened with Saitama during his training. He reached level 100 and then he kept training harder than everyone else. You know, this takes special individuals, obviously, considering that there's so many other outrageously powerful characters within the series, but only Saitama has removed his limiter, or at least as far as we know. So once he reached 100, he broke his level cap, started to going to level 101, and you know, so forth, and he's probably, I don't know, level 1 billion, who knows right now, but he's, you know, certainly way further along than everyone else in this MMO who is stuck at level 100, but with the case of Garo, during his fight with Darkshine, he has reached level 100 and is starting to go into the territory of breaking into level 101. Now, while both of these characters have reached the point of breaking the level cap, they both had entirely different journeys getting there because we know that Saitama did the whole 100 push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and the 10 kilometer running every single day. And also he fought monsters and stuff like that, which we'll get into, but it was mainly Saitama taking the long, super hard grinding route to just through sheer effort, as Dr. Gina says, he was able to break his level cap, you know, removing his limiter. And it took Saitama about a year and a half to do this. He says, you know, after about one and a half years, he noticed two changes about himself. He lost his hair, became strong. Losing the hair was signifying the limiter removing. And then he had like another year and a half to go further into his limitless power. So, you know, he started at level 101. And that's why I'm saying that he could be at like level 1 million, 1 billion, whatever at this point. Who knows how far he has come since he's removed his limiter. But the difference between him and Garo in doing this is that while it took him a year and a half, it took Garo about a couple days. So it took Saitama so long because Dr. Genus says that he was ordinary. He had an ordinary birth, ordinary life. He's just a normal person with no talent or potential. And just through sheer effort alone, he pried open the doors of his limits and then broke his limiter. Garo, on the other hand, is pretty much like the exact opposite. And this is the nice contrast that one has set up between these two characters that are both essentially approaching the same point or have already. Because G Garo is like a genetic phenom, pretty much. I mean, it goes back to what Dr. Genus was talking about when he was explaining Monsters and Heroes, when he says that... There are heroes that are born with the power to like oppose monsters. They have the potential to become strong and eventually obtained their power through talent or hard work. And Garo has like the best of both worlds. He's talent and hard work. 
because he's gotten this far by apparently forcing himself through suicidal training, dojo challenges, as well as the hero hunt. So that's just the beginning of him already, you know, far exceeding Saitama, you know, just through a couple days because, you know, the talent and the potential and all of that, along with hard work. And it's also stated by Psychos, aka Giro Giro, that Garo had even greater potential than Orochi, who we know had some pretty good inherent potential since I guess he was like the only person that Psychos was able to find that was able to withstand the revival from death power boost mechanism, aka the Zenkai boost that allowed him to break through the various walls that it took to get to the point of, I guess, above Dragon where Orochi was. It was also stated that he was a quote-unquote martial arts genius the way that Garo was as well. And considering that Garo is above him, we're looking at a super special individual here. Now, on top of just his genetic profile, he also has like an inherent broken Shonen MC ability as to where it's just straight out said that in a battle against the strong, the harder he is pushed, the more he can unleash his true ability and allow his experience to grow. Now, aside from that, I also want to get into the Zenkai boost, or at least one of them that Garo has received, and that is at the hands of Royal Ripper, when he's basically pushed as close to death as he could, and then came back from it and broke through a wall, as Psycho says. Now, Psycho also says that, simply put, you must experience death many times as a human in order to completely overload your body and spirit, but it's super difficult. Because at any point, even if you did survive, it's quite common for growth to stagnate due to low intelligence and you end up with like a mediocre monster or just a mediocre powerful individual. But the most important part is to experience a hell that is tailored to the individual. So Garo, we're seeing that obviously he has the opposite of low intelligence as he's stated to be a genius numerous times and he kind of has been put through his own personal hell fighting all of these extremely overpowered opponents and whatnot, and also coming close to death against Royal Ripper, and it's possible that Orochi pushed him to another Zenkai boost as well. I'm really unsure if this happened because it's never outright stated that he was, you know, pushed at that point, but it really seems like he was. Now, regardless, he received a power boost from fighting Orochi nonetheless because it goes back to what I was saying with how he grows during fights when he's pushed that far. So it's ultimately an amalgamation of all of these factors that has caused Garo to come to the point of breaking his limiter so quickly and so much faster than someone like Saitama. Because Garo has basically been put into the perfect environment for this to happen. Like by luck of course, but also through his sheer effort and just unbreakable will that has allowed him to come this far. Because we've seen like, He's been fighting everyone that he's basically needed to fight, and given the insane potential that he has, it's allowed him to grow at like an unprecedented rate. Because he's been pushed in almost all of his fights, or all of his significant fights. Like it first really started against him and Tank Top Master, and then we saw he, you know, he was kind of pushed by Watchdog Man, but that fight's kind of an outlier. But when we see him start to go against Death Gatling and his crew, we see Garo start to push further. Then he's, you know, pushed again by Genos. And it's really at that point that we see him push further than he ever has. And that's when he's really starting to grow. Because, like it's stated, that in a battle against the strong, the harder he is pushed, the more that he can unlock his true ability, as well as his experience, and grow. And then after Genos, of course, it only gets more difficult because he runs into Bang and Bomb, and we see that he grows even further from that. And then once he's able to rest and recover, he fights Royal Ripper and Bug God. And then after that, you know, he gets the Zenkai boost, so that's just growing him extraordinarily after that. Then he's going against over a Rover, going against a Rochi. And then finally, it all culminates with him going against Darkshine, one of the strongest S-Class heroes, and allowed him to get to that level 100 level cap and start to break it and begin to have the ability to just go into level 101. So it's just this insane gauntlet that Garo has ran just in like a couple days, which is basically like a hell uh, tailored to his individual uh, being, as well as with his inherent potential, the genetics, the genius factor.
character and along with you know a little zenkai boost dashed on there uh, in the mix of it all this has caused garo to speed run the ability to remove his limiter which took saitama about a year and a half so that's pretty much it for the video today guys let me know what you think about this one what do you think about the limiter what do you think about garo reaching that mythical legendary place and also, if you liked it, please give it a like. I also have a Patreon. It gives you access to a weekly Q&A. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. Have a great day. I'll see you.